Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So this is going to be part two on all things related to logarithms, and today we're going to be going over transformations of the logarithmic function. By the end of this video, you'll understand what each transformation does to the log function, we'll also review the mapping rule, and we'll learn how to graph these log functions. We'll also go over two example problems where we practice what we've learned so far. If you guys like this content, I'd really appreciate you liking this video and subscribing to the channel to see more videos just like this. Alright, let's get started. Alright, so at this point we've transformed lots of different graphs. We've done reciprocal and rational function transformations. You could do transformations on sine graphs and trigonometric graphs. And here this is actually no different. So we're always going to see this form here. This form of y is equal to a times the function kx minus d plus c. So what that is, is the proper form that allows us to understand what these transformations do. And note carefully that this k is separate from this x here. So we, we don't want them to switch, like, smush together. We're going to go over that in one of the example problems. But everything stays the same. So the absolute value of a, so this value right here, that represents the vertical stretch or compression. The k value here, that represents, and the absolute value of it, represents the horizontal stretch and compression. And you'll note this reflection here. So if there's a negative in sign in front of the a or the k, that's going to reflect the graph. So if we have a negative sign in front of the a, that's going to be a reflection over the x-axis. If, it's, it's, if it's in front of the k variable, then that's actually a reflection over the y-axis. Lastly, we have the transformations involving translation. So that's d, so that's horizontal translation, so shifting the graph left and right. And we also have c, which is vertical translation, or shifting the graph up and down. Now I want to review the mapping rule. So the mapping rule is saying that x, y is going to be transformed by like the coordinates x comma y, so a point of x comma y, can be transformed to be x over k plus d, that's the x coordinate now, comma a times y plus c. So this is basically just breaking down this transformed function. And, and again, we want the form of y is equal to a f k x minus d plus c. And this f here can just be replaced with whatever function we're dealing with. It could be replaced with a sine function. Uh, you know, a quadratic function, a trigonometric function, and now we're going to be applying it to the log function. But before we do that, I want to just kind of review the mapping rule and how it's being used to find out the graphs of transform transformed functions. So here, if we look at this parent function of x squared, right, this is going to say that negative 2, negative 2 squared, that's going to be 4. Negative 1, negative 1 squared, that's going to be 1. Then 0, 0 squared is 0, and so on and so forth. Now we're going to apply a transformation, and you can note that this really represents the a, the k, the d value, and the c value. So it's of the form, like we talked about before, this a, f, k, x minus d plus c. And in this case, we're just applying the quadratic function to it. So what we're going to do for this mapping rule is we're going to, we're going to look at the points on the parent function first. And then we're going to apply these transformations both to the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate to get our transformed graph. So here we're going to have... The first point, or the transformed point, is going to be, well, we'll have negative 2, negative 2 over k, so in this case it's, it's 2 as well, and then it's going to be plus 4, because that's the d value, that's the horizontal translation. And it makes sense, because the x-coordinate represents horizontal on the graph, right, the horizontal kind of situation, the x-coordinate, and the k value, that rep represents horizontal compression, and the d value represents horizontal translation. So it makes sense that when we're applying these transformations, the horizontal parts go to the x values and the vertical parts go to the y values. So now for the y point, what we're going to do is going to be 4, which is our y value, multiplied by our a value, which is 3, and then plus our c value, which is 3 as well. So here, if we solve for this point, it's going to be negative 2 over 2, that's going to be negative 1, plus 3, that's going to be 3. Next, we're going to have 4 times 3 is 12, plus 3, well, that's going to be 15. And you can see that I did this previously, but that is the point we get right there. And that's kind of how you solve for these transformed graphs and find out what this graph is going to look like. So now we're going to apply it to the logarithmic function. So now it's important to note all of our transformed variables or all of our kind of expressions here. So our a value is 2. We're going to have a k value of 2, a d value of 4, and a c value of 5. Once we have all that, and we kind of check to make sure this is of the form 
uh, that we're used to seeing. So that y is equal to a f k x minus d plus c form, and it is. So now we can use the mapping rule to find out what these transformed points are going to have. And once we have the points, we can obviously just connect the points to get the graph. So what we're going to do is, first we're going to do 0 0.01 divided by, because that's our x value, that's our x value of our parent function, divided by k, so that's 2, and that's going to be plus 4. So this comma, and then we can do our y value, so that's going to be negative 2 multiplied by a, which is 2, and then we're going to plus the c value, which is 5. So here, we'll get the point of 0 point, so point 0 0.01 divided by 2, that's point 0 0 0.005, plus 4. This is going to be 4.005, comma, negative 4 plus 1, that's going to be 1. So we get the value of 4.005, comma, 1. We can now apply the same strategy to the next point on the parent function. So again, we're going to look at point 1. So we're going to be point 1 divided by 2 plus 4. That's going to give us 4.05. Next, we're going to do negative 1 times 2, and then plus our c value, which is 5. That's going to give us the value 3. So here we get 4.05 comma 3. Again, that's another point on our transform graph. We can keep going and say 1 divided by 2 plus 4. Well, that's going to give us 4.5 here. And then now it's going to be 2 times 0, because that's our parent point, plus 5. So this will be 4.5 comma 5. Next, we can do 10 divided by 2 plus 4. This is 9. And then we're going to do 1 times 2 plus 5. This is 9 comma 7. That's another point there. Finally, we can do 100 divided by 2 and plus 4. So we get 54. And then it's going to be 2 times 2 plus 5. So that's going to be 54 comma 9. And now what we've done is we've taken our transformed graph and we've just related it to our parent function and applied all the transformation to each of the points. So once we have all the points, we can just connect them, and that will be the graph of our transformed function. Okay, so moving on to our example problem. Here, we're asked to sketch the graph, and the graph is log uh, base 10 of negative 2x minus 4. And again, I mentioned in the earlier part of this video that we want these x's and y, or the k and x to be separate, right? We don't want them to be kind of smushed together. We have to have it always of this form. So that's the first thing you check for when you look for a transformed graph. So this is actually going to turn into, and I'm just going to separate the k and the x variable now. So this is log base 10, and this is going to be, I'm going to factor out the negative 2. So then we're going to have x plus 2, and that's going to be our new graph. And this actually meets the form that we're looking for. So once we have that form, then we can just pull out the parameters we need. So now I'm just going to write down all of the variables we have. So we're going to have a is equal to, well a is just equal to 1. Our k value is equal to negative 2, and that negative represents a reflection in the y-axis. Then we're going to have d, well that actually equals negative 2 because of this positive. Usually a positive d is of the form negative, so minus like 2, but in this case it's plus 2, so we know that that's actually a horizontal shift to the left. And finally we have c, and that is equal to 0 because there's no vertical translation. So now to apply the mapping rule, what we're going to need to do is look at the parent points of our function. So in this example, the parent function is still y is equal to log x base 10. So we can actually just apply the same func or the same points we had in our previous example, or kind of our, our first step to, to understand what the mapping rule does to the logarithmic function, and use that, those points, to now find the transformed function. So here I'm going to take our a values, k values, d values, and c values, and apply the mapping rule. So again, I'm going to have 0 0.01 divided by, well, now k is negative 2, so we have to account for that negative, and then it's going to be plus, well, actually, it's going to be minus d, because of this negative 2 here, comma, and then a y, so negative 2 times 1, um, plus c, and c is 0. So that is going to be our point here. This is going to be 0 .0, 0 0.01 divided by negative 2, minus 2. So we get negative 2.005, comma, negative 2. So that would be our first point here. So now looking at our next point, we're going to have 0.1 divided by 2, or actually negative 2, so it's going to be negative 0.05, and then it'll be minus 2. So here we'll get negative 2.05, and then if we look at our y variable, or y point, it's going to be negative 1 times 1, because a value is 1, and then plus 0, so it's going to be negative 1 like there. Now if we continue this function, this is going to be 1 divided by 2, um, so that's times negative 1, minus 2, 
we get negative 2.5. Then we're going to have, this is going to be 0 0.0 because 2 times, or 1 times 0 plus 0. Lastly, we'll have 10 divided by negative uh, 2 minus 2. So this is going to be negative 7. And we're going to have 1 times 1. So this will be a value of 1 here. Our last point is going to be negative 50 minus 2. So it'll be negative 52. And then it'll be 2 times, so this will be point number 2. Now, we have all of our points that we need to graph this function. So now we're just going to draw a graph using all these points. So now we can draw negative 2.005, negative 2. So we're going to get a value that's probably right around there. And then the next value is going to be negative 2.04, negative 1. So it's going to be like right there. It's going to be very close to the same point. Next, we have negative 2.5, comma, 0. So that will be right there. Um, we have negative 7, or sorry, negative 7, 7, 1. So that's right here. So this function is going to look something where we go through all four of these points, and we could graph the other one. It's just uh, very far in the distance, so it would be not very to scale here. But it's going to look something like that. And our typical log function is of uh, this form right here. So we usually have a vertical asymptote like this, right, at zero. We shifted this vertical asymptote two units, right, so it's going to get very close to this value of negative two but never touch it. And we also reflected it over the y-axis. So I think you can see from these transformations that this blue graph, you know, it kind of makes sense. It passes like the gut test. All right, so now we have an example problem where it's a word problem. And it's talking about very similar principles that we've been doing, but it's a little bit hidden in kind of the, the paragraph here. So it says function f of x equals log of, 10, or log of x base 10 has a point 10 comma 1 on its graph. If f of x is stretched vertically by a factor of 3, Reflect in the x-axis, and then horizontally stretch by a factor of 2. Horizontally translate 5 units to the right, and vertically translated 2 units up. Determine the equation of the transformed function, the coordinates of image point transformed from 10, 1, and lastly, the domain and range of the function. So, basically, throughout this paragraph, you want to sift through the kind of important information. So, we're looking at this parent function here. This is what we've been using before, log 10, or log of x base 10. And then here we're looking for, so it's vertically stretched by a factor of 3. So a is equal to 3, because a is responsible for vertical stretching and compression. Then it's reflected in the x-axis, so reflected in the x-axis, that seems like a negative value that's going to be put on the negative a. So it's now negative 3. We also see that it's reflected in the x-axis, so that's going to be a negative a value. So now a is negative 3. It's then horizontally stretched by a factor of 2. And remember that k corresponds to horizontal stretching and compression. In this case, we have k is equal to 1 half because it is stretched. Usually k is compressed, so when it's stretched, we know that it's the reciprocal of this factor. It's then horizontally translated 5 units to the right, so that would be a d value equal to 5 and then vertically translated two units up. So that will be c is equal to two. So now determine the equation of the transform function. Well, once we have all these variables, it's actually pretty easy to do, because we're just gonna plug in these variables wherever we you know, see this function, or see the variables. So we have y is equal to, well our parent function, I'll write that down first, is log 10. That's the base, that's the, the parent function right there. Now our a value is negative three, right? So that's where we put that. Then we have here our k value. Our k value is 1 over 2. Then we have x minus d, so x minus 5 in this case. And then plus c, which is plus 2 in this case. So that would be our answer to a, because we've just looked through and sifted through all of the important information to show this transformed function as an equation. The next thing they ask is the coordinates of image point the coordinates of the image point transform from 10 comma 1. So what they're saying is take 10 comma 1 of the parent function, right, the point on the parent function, 10 comma 1, and then apply these transformations to see what where that point would be in this transform function. So here this is just the mapping rule again. So we're going to take 10 divided by k, which in this case we have k to be 1 half, so it's divided by 1 half or 0.5, and then it is plus 5, that is d, comma, then we have a negative 3, that's our a value, times the y value, which is 1, plus 2. So we're going to get 10 divided by 0.5 
plus 5. So we're going to get 25, comma, negative 3 plus 2, that's going to be negative 1. That would be our answer to part B. This is the transformed image. Now they talk about the domain and range of a function. So we can say that domain, typically for a logarithmic function, there's a vertical asymptote, right? So the vertical asymptote says that x will never be that value. And also, there's no negative values on the log function, right? If we think about doing log base 10 of, I don't know, negative 3, again, we have to talk about what that means. They're saying, to what power must I raise 10 to get negative 3? And you could put that power to anything you want. It could be a negative number, a very high number, low number, whatever you want. You'll never get negative 3. So the domain is already restricted on the parent function for the logarithmic graph. So here, we just need to see that, okay, well, if we've translated it five units to the right, then we know that the domain is going to be x, or it's going to be x is greater than, uh, or not equal to, just greater than, five. And then we can do x represents or belongs to all real numbers. So this would be the domain here because, again, we're looking at this function and we know the domain function is already restricted for its parent function. Now we just need to apply the transformations to that function. So that is the domain right there. The range is actually pretty easy because even though these graphs you know, taper off pretty quickly, if you look at this graph here, this blue graph, it's getting like it seems like there might be a horizontal asymptote just because of how much it continually, like it basically stagnates, com comes flat, but it never actually becomes flat. It'll always keep increasing in the y direction. Just like the exponential function will always keep increasing in, in the x direction, but it's just going to keep going up at a very small rate each time in the x direction. So we actually can say that the range of a logarithmic function is just y belongs to all real numbers. And that would be our answer to that one. So I hope you guys got some value out of this video. If you did, I'd really appreciate you liking this video and subscribing to the channel to see more videos just like this. If you guys have any ideas of what content you want me to cover next, let me know in the comments down below. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys in the next video.